This is the first of five videos I'm going to do about the different types of video that you can add to Adobe Captivate. Today we're going to talk about event video. To add event video to an Adobe Captivate slide, you click on the media icon in your toolbar and you select video. From there you choose event video and then you browse to the location on your computer where that video resides. We're going to click on the open button and then click on the OK button to add that video to this particular slide. Let's resize it so it fits nicely on this slide, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the features of event video. First of all, I should point out that event video is not compatible with interactive video. Interactive video is a feature in Adobe Captivate 2019 or newer that allows you to add overlay elements and bookmarks to your video to make videos much more interactive than they are by default. Playback is independent of the slide, so you can see here that this slide is the default three seconds that we started out with, even though this video is over a minute long. So in other words, the video is asynchronous with your e-learning project. And that's of course probably why it's not compatible with interactive video. You do have independent playback controls, as you can see here. Uh, they won't appear like this in your actual published HTML5 output. Uh, if I select the Properties Inspector and take a look at the properties for this video, you can see that there are a series of skins available. Uh, however, this is restricted strictly for SWF output. If you're publishing for HTML5, you'll either see no skin or a generic skin that will cover all, the, all your bases. When there's no skin selected, the video will automatically play by itself. However, if you select one of the skins, uh, you can either check autoplay or leave it unchecked if you'd like users to click play to start the video. At the end of the video, you can have the video auto rewind. And one of my favorite features of event video is actually located on the timing panel. You'll see that there's this checkbox available for pausing the slide until the user has reached the end of the video. This is useful uh, if you want to keep the slide in place until the user's actually watched all the content and it doesn't proceed even if there is no next button or what have you until the, uh, the user's finished looking at all this content. Uh, in addition to that, uh, event video is not compatible with closed captioning that's built in to Captivate. So in other words, uh, if you're concerned about accessibility or 508 compliance, event video might not be a good choice for you. Adding event video to your project will increase the size of your Captivate project but on the plus side, unlike some of the other video formats, uh, it will not require access to the public internet. So users could be behind a firewall and still be able to see those videos. Let's do a preview of what event video looks like so you have an idea. So in this case, I chose not to auto play, but if I click on play, I can see the video. You'll notice that my slide is now paused, awaiting for the end of the video to arrive. But I, of course, have full control of the playback of this video. I can pause it. I can use the scrub bar to navigate to a different part of the video where uh, other things might be happening. And of course, I can uh, rewind that video back to the beginning. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.